Hey, Divi Nation, thanks for stopping by our documentation section to learn a little bit more about the Divi Theme Customizer and the Module Customizer. Now, most WordPress installs are gonna have a Theme Customizer. The only difference with the Divi Theme Customizer is that it's chock full of settings specifically for Divi. So that should be familiar to almost any WordPress user. And what this allows you to do is set global settings for your entire website for things like heading size, body text, certain colors for accent, header and footer options, and a whole slew of other things. Now the module customizer is very similar, and this is very specific to Divi. So Divi uses modules um, inserted into rows and sections to create your website. And so what you're able to do with the module customizer is create default or, yeah, default settings that you'll be able to use whenever that module is installed on, or inserted rather, onto a page. So this is incredibly useful because what you're able to see then is uh, an incredible speeding up of your design process when you're not having to do the same few customizations every time you insert a blurb module, for instance, onto a page. Everyone's gonna start off with the exact same uh, default settings. So we're gonna show you how to use these powerful global design tools in this video, check it out. In this video, I'll be giving a basic overview of the Divi theme customizer and the module customizer. These two customizers work together and serve as a set of design controls to customize and design every aspect of your website. I'll be giving you a basic overview, but feel free to explore our other more detailed tutorials on the more specific options within these customizers. Let's go ahead and get started. First, to find your theme customizer, you would go to your WordPress dashboard and in the left sidebar, hover over Divi and you'll find it in the nav there. Click on the theme customizer and once it deploys, you'll see that there are a lot of options in the left sidebar and this kind of user navigation uh, setup is really convenient. You can toggle through different sections and settings go back and forth uh, to, through each one of them. And if you're familiar with WordPress, uh, you probably are already familiar with their built-in customizer. This is somewhat similar, except it has a whole lot more features added to it and to work with the Divi theme and really give you all the options necessary to set it up and customize it how you want. And so basically, you have everything you need right here to set your theme up to design it and set your defaults um, so you get it looking like you want it before you start adding more of the specific modules and content of your site. So let's just kind of take a look at some of these settings so, so we can get a feel out as to what the theme customizer is and what it does. As you can see, it starts with the general settings and kind of works its way down to a more specific customization like additional CSS. So it's a good idea to kind of start at the top. Click on general settings you can see we have things like layout settings, typography, and these settings are you know as it as it says general settings. So they they're going to have the more widespread effects and, and overall feel of your site. For instance, you can change the the setup uh, excuse me, the layout of your site to a box layout. Uh, you can change the content width of your site easily. And it's really convenient that you can, uh, the theme customizer allows you to see the changes in real time. You can change your gutter width uh, defaults. And you can see a couple of things shifting here because that kind of changes the distance between columns in, uh, in your builders. Uh, so that's the gutter width. Uh, section height, row height, you can also change the width of those, uh, the space between those. And if you make some changes and you want to go back to the default settings, each one of these options has a restore to default icon here uh, that you can click on and it automatically restores that to its default setting, which is very convenient. Uh, let's go back and take a look at the typography settings. Uh, you'll see all the different main uh, typography you will be using for your site can be customized here and the defaults can be set. For instance, body text size, body line height, 
Um, you can adjust your header text sizes here, uh, the default setting, um, as well as your body link color, text color, things like that. Uh, you, of course, once you start building your site using the 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 built-in Divi builder or visual builder, and then you start adding your modules, each module can uh, or has uh, design settings that can override these general settings set in the theme customizer. So keep that in mind that uh, this will give you a good start, um, but you can always override them in the actual modules themselves when you're building your site. Let's go back. Um, let's check out the header and navigation settings. Uh, this applies to the both the standard view of your header up here with the navigation as well as the fixed navigation. You can edit both of those. Also, if you wanted to deploy a secondary menu, you could uh, custom, uh, set the default customizations here for that. Um, as well as add header elements, just so you can get a idea. If I add my phone number here and email, um, I can save that, refresh, and we can see a secondary menu pop up there. Probably won't match the site, but you get the idea. Right now it's a blue, has my two uh, header elements in there. And if I wanted to uh, edit that secondary uh, bar up there, I could do that here. Maybe add the purple. Um, also, f the primary menu bar, that, that is the standard view here of your primary menu. You could change the elements. Um, maybe I want to increase the height of my menu or maybe just the logo height needs to change. I can do that here. Uh, the text size of my menu items can change as well as all the colors of these elements. Um, restore defaults on that and let's go back uh, to fixed navigation. You could, uh, if I was to start scrolling down, this deploys my fixed navigation. I could change that here if I wanted to. And of course, all this is good to set the default design and customizations needed for um, setting up your website build. So one other thing I should mention um, besides uh, while I'm while I'm on that topic is that here uh, you have this ex import and export option to actually export all of your customizer settings. So if you have a certain way that you like to build websites or a certain group of settings that you like or grown accustomed to that kind of will help you get a head start, you can export that, save it, and then import it on your next install of Divi. And then you'll automatically have all those settings ready to go, which is a, a really helpful feature. So all you do is just press the uh, import export icon up there, uh, the portability icon, and then click export, uh, name your export file and export it out there as well as import if you wanted to. All right. So continuing on, you have the option to customize the settings of your footer. Right now we just have this, uh, footer here. If I wanted to change the layout from a four column to like a, uh, like a three column or something like that, I could do it here as well as customize what the widgets look like in here. Maybe change the text size of those. The bottom bar is that very bottom uh, dark bar with the default designed by Elegant themes powered by WordPress text down there. I could change that, add footer credits if I wanted. Um, buttons, if I wanted a certain des a default design for all of the buttons on my site, I could change it there. Uh, I wouldn't mess with color scheme, uh, leave that as a default um, and just I would um, just use the other options to set your colors. Uh, for instance, in general settings, um, you have in layout settings, you have this theme accent color. I would use that instead of changing your default color for the whole site. Uh, let's see mobile so styles. This is very uh, helpful to, you know, customize the, the 
the, the look and feel of your site on mobile devices like tablet and phone. This allows you to toggle uh, through those and set those real general like spacing problems you may have um, on tablet and phone and it allows you to see it in real time, which is very helpful. Uh, these other elements are pretty standard to WordPress customizer like menu widgets. Uh, this is where you would add the content for your footer down here. Um, and okay. And then your additional CSS, uh, very convenient to have it in the theme customizer. Uh, a lot of times, uh, you, you wouldn't, you would spend a lot of time in the theme customizer and wouldn't have to leave, for instance, to go in the back end and look at the code. You can just continue to make changes and see the changes in real time. All right, so that's good for the uh, theme customizer. Let's take a look at what the module customizer is and what it can do. Um, so if I were finished here, I would click Save and Publish. Um, I'm not going to save my changes, but if I wanted to, you could do that there and then exit out. So to go to your module customizer, go to the WordPress dashboard, hover over Divi, and then find the module customizer. Now the difference between the theme customizer and the module customizer is pretty self-explanatory in the name. The theme customizer customizes your theme options uh, and the module customizer is, is, is what customizes your individual modules. And so as I see my module customizer deployed here, uh, I have a whole lot of settings because most of my modules can uh, be directly customized within this customizer. So for instance, I, I can see that my image module, um, if I wanted to, I could add a default animation to all of the image, all of the images that are uh, deployed using the image module. Uh, the gallery, for instance, gallery module, I can set a default zoom icon color uh, other than what is set in my uh, theme customizer. For instance, this is pulling from my accent, my, my theme accent color. If I wanted to change it and set a different one for all of the uh, gallery modules, I can do it there. Um, for, let's see, what else? Um, blurbs. Uh, we use these a lot. If you wanted to set a custom font size for all of the blurb modules, sometimes that's really convenient and a time saver uh, because maybe the default uh, body text of your site is going to be different from what your module, uh, blurb modules are going to be. Sometimes your blurb modules require maybe smaller text. Uh, and instead of having to do that every time you, you make a, a, a blurb module, uh, you can go ahead and set the default font size here. And of course you have a whole lot more to choose from. Uh, everything, uh, even the, like a person module, you can adjust the, just the name font size, set the default there. Um, as you can see, customizing all of these modules and then going ahead and exporting out these settings will be very useful uh, for your future builds. And so I suggest you take the time to do that if you haven't already. Um, and before I go, I just wanted to bring your attention down to these um, items here at the bottom of the sidebar. You have uh, the high controls button that toggles the sidebar settings here, closed and open which is helpful whenever you're trying to see the full layout of your web page while you're making changes. Um, you can also toggle the mobile displays for tablet and phone, um, as well as desktop, of course, and which is helpful whenever you're making customizations to see how they're going to look on these mobile devices as well. Well, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the overview of the theme customizer and the module customizer.